Certainly a lot of people seeing this would be surprised to know that just beyond the highway there are these camps and they exist not only where Anastasia was in New Jersey but all around the country. But I do want to talk to Anastasia about this, uh, our two correspondent Anastasia Cherkina in New York. And I really want to ask you, I know this is not your first time visiting this camp in Lakewood, New Jersey. Uh, talk to me about how things have changed. Well, you know, Christine, definitely the biggest change that we've seen is, of course, in the numbers. Sadly, the first time we were at the camp, the numbers were no more than 30 people. Then that has turned into uh, 40, and it is now at 70. We were really surprised to discover this, considering all the talk of... Uh, the recession ending and things getting better that are uh, taking place in the United States, it was really shocking to see how much the camp has really expanded since the last time we were there. And uh, uh, in terms of the changes, we have to say that uh, visibly it has uh, really turned into something a lot more organized than it used to be, which is really also uh, a sad example, really, because this means that people are there to stay and they understand that. Uh, sort of a little community, uh, as it looked like. I'm wondering, I mean, I, I didn't realize, you, you said it went from 30 to 70 people. That's more than doubling the population of this little community. Uh, I'm wondering if you recognized um, familiar faces, people that, that were there last year and are still there now. Christine, you know, I really w was hoping that we wouldn't see the familiar faces, but unfortunately we did. We did show that one man in our report. He's in his 50s. You know, the change in him has really been drastic. I remember this man the last time we were there several months ago, and he was a very cheerful person, played a little music for us. And uh, these days he's really transformed. It looks like this particular man aged at least... 10 years. There was another woman we talked to the previous times who was still there, unfortunately, even though she was one of the most hopeful ones that she would be leaving very, very soon. And she's still there this time around. She didn't want to talk on camera and was quite disappointed by the fact that we had returned and still witnessed her there, as well as a couple of other people. But, you know, it's important that people, uh, some of the campers there, they come and go, but it has turned into somewhat of a vicious circle for many because those who do leave, unfortunately, end up coming back. Uh, I'm wondering, um, we, we saw in your report mostly uh, men sort of on the young side and, and middle aged, but, but what's the actual population? I know a lot of people don't want to talk on camera that stay there. I mean, were there a lot of women there? Were there children? Well, uh, Christine, the women there do make up as much as a third of the entire camp, as you rightfully said, and as we did point out in that report, they did not uh, feel good enough about their situation to talk on camera about it and really be shown uh, to, to the rest of uh, the country in this particular case. And uh, there are no children at the camp. We, knew, we do know that in the five years that it's existed, there have been a couple of mothers with kids there, but they didn't stay around long, thankfully, because there was shelters found for them, and uh, it would have really been a much bigger issue if children were staying at this camp. Obviously, Ana Anastasia, you know about this camp. Um, others know about it as well. How do the residents, um, do they have to deal with police? Uh, is there a danger that they're, they're going to be asked to leave at any point? Yes, you know, apart from having a terrible uh, life of struggle every single day, just trying to sustain themselves in the middle of the woods, really in the middle of nowhere, with no jobs, homes, or family members, these residents also go through a constant struggle with authorities. Some have really called it a war even, because they do face constant eviction threats. The community leader, Steve Brigham, whom we saw in that report, uh, is being sued by local officials who want the camp shut down. And this is something that they keep fighting, they keep... Uh, really protesting. They were offered by officials to be taken to a psychiatric ward because there are no shelters available in the area. But certainly this is something that they've refused. They'd rather stay in the woods than uh, go to uh, you know, a psychiatric ward, uh, understandably, in this particular case. Certainly uh, it's one thing to, to visit homeless people on the streets or in these kind of places, but to go back repeatedly really gives a lot of perspective to see how much things have changed. RT's Anastasia Cherkina in New York.